This is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you with us on this Friday. It is almost the weekend. I'm Jacqueline Matter. I'm Ray Collins. Hello, early risers. Do you want to get your joke out of the way early for our, our color combination? Oh, no. I'm, <laughs> I told, I was been, I have been told it's too corny. You say it. Oh, I can't. Well, Jacqueline would want to say. Orange, you glad it's Friday. Orange, you glad it's <laughs> there Friday. There you go. All you right. made me say it. You You're know making what? John double over in laughter. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's corny, I know, but it makes me happy. Corny, but cute. <laughs> Corny, but cute. Yes, I am glad it's Friday, actually. <laughs> uh, and in fact, the weekend looked like it's shaping up to be a pretty nice weekend indeed. Yesterday didn't get as much rain around as we thought that we might. And today, I think the number of showers that we get will probably be kind of similar to what we saw yesterday, which wasn't a whole lot of coverage. We'll go with about a 40% chance of rainfall later in the day. Sunshine with a mix of sun and clouds to start the day and into the afternoon, followed by increasing clouds in inland areas and a few scattered showers. Right now, radar pretty quiet. Morning commute should be A-OK. -okay. Don't see anything there. A lot of sunshine around. UV indexes will be high. Humidity is high as well. And day time high temperatures will be above average once again coming in in the low 90s hit 93 yesterday we'll probably do that again today or thereabouts we'll look for about a 40 percent chance of late afternoon showers and as I mentioned the weekend looks pretty nice we'll detail that for you coming up in just a few all right very good talk to you soon John looks like the roads first off in Manatee County night you might not be able to see this because I think you've got a uh, icon well, now it's gone. There was a big buildup there in 75 uh, on State Road 70 east of 75. Now it's no longer there. Otherwise, pretty clear right now in Manatee County. Not much to report. There's a little bit of a blip there on Beat Ridge Road after you pass Kettleman and head toward the interstate. And then South County, yeah, look at that, a little bit of slowdown already. And the, uh, looks like the uh, southbound lane could track that red movement uh, just north of Business 41 at 502 on your Friday morning. Topping our news this morning, the search continues for the suspects involved in a home invasion that led to the death of a man in Bradenton last weekend. A reward has been increased to $8,000 to find who did it. Our Rick Adams has an update. Well, sheriff deputies continue to piece together exactly what took place in the home back there. One thing we do know is that there is a lot more reward money now being offered. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office says it's a murder that still remains unsolved nearly a week later. Investigators are trying to figure out who killed 54-year-old Dwayne Hutchinson at his home in the 1600 block of Zipper Road in East Manatee last weekend. We've been basically working around the clock to solve this thing since we responded early Saturday morning. And we think the reward being offered by the Gold Star Club will definitely help us hopefully get new information and eventually lead to an arrest. A total of $8,000 in reward money is now being offered, $5,000 from the Gold Star Club of Manatee County and $3,000 from Crime Stoppers. At the request of the Sheriff's Department, when they're dealing with a homicide or a crime against a child, um, they'll oftentimes then reach out to us for that reward money. So we're just happy to be able to provide that. The Sheriff's Office says Hutchinson was found dead in an upstairs bedroom. This after two burglars entered the home. Hutchinson's wife says she was accosted by the burglars downstairs in the home prior to the two men going upstairs. A report says there was trauma to Hutchinson's body indicating that he was murdered, but the exact cause of death has yet to be released. We have quite a bit of information that we're not giving out at this point just because uh, the investigation is ongoing and there's certain things that we want to withhold. And for anyone who knows anything about this homicide, you're being asked to contact the Manatee County Sheriff's Office and your tips can be kept anonymous. Reporting from East Manatee, I'm Rick Adams, ABC7, your Suncoast News. The deputies are also trying to find the person who shot at a Palmetto man's car in front of his house yesterday morning. Someone used a shotgun to fire shots at the car on Tarpon Road. No one was injured and there was no other damage reported in the area. If you can help this one, call Crime Stoppers at the number listed on your screen. An alert for drivers this morning. A detour will be in place at I-75 and University Parkway. The roadway will be closed for paving until 6 a.m. For the east and westbound lanes at University Parkway, those will be closed west of I-75 at the diverging diamond, as will the I-75 north and southbound off-ramps leading to westbound University Parkway. That construction is all part of efforts to fix up the area surrounding the diverging diamond interchange, a project which is expected to be complete later this fall. 
Also happening today, after being closed for almost a year, the Osprey Avenue Bridge will reopen to traffic today. It's been closed for the past 11 months so that crews could install two tunnels as part of the Lift Station 87 project. The entire project should be complete by 2019. Once it is complete, wastewater flow will be redirected from Lift Station 7 to Lift Station 87. Again, that bridge will reopen to traffic today at 4 p.m. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office is getting ready to back up the moving trucks. Yeah, the Sheriff's Office plans to move its headquarters to this 70,000 square foot office building near Bee Ridge and Cattlemen. The move will cost taxpayers some $16 million to buy and renovate this building. Sheriff Tom Knight says the current downtown facility has roof leaks, rodents, and space issues. It would also put them closer to the county's emergency operations center. No word yet when this move will take place. Earlier this month, the city of Sarasota extended the ban on medical marijuana dispensaries, and now the city of Punta Gorda is doing the same. The Punta Gorda City Council voted unanimously on Wednesday to ban medical marijuana dispensaries until next year. That move comes just a day after the Charlotte County Commission voted to ban disp dispensaries in its jurisdiction. The use of cannabis is now legal for the treatment of some diseases and illnesses, including cancer, epilepsy, and Parkinson's disease. Amendment 2 was passed by a 71% approval statewide and 70% in Charlotte County. Since last year's presidential race, many here on the Sun Coast have been eager to voice their political concerns to elected officials representing Florida and Washington. Congressman Vern Buchanan is offering sit-down meetings with a member of his staff, but as our Adam Cellini found out, some want more town hall meetings. Congressman Vern Buchanan heard from at least five constituents on Thursday without ever having to see them. He's a busy man and it, they should know as much as the congressman, really, if they're working for him. Former Postal Service workers Ron and Marsha Crosby met with Buchanan's special assistant Gary Tibbetts at Palmetto City Hall to discuss a personal social security problem. And compared to a town hall... I like it. I like yes, both. Yes, mm, like a little people. more relaxed. Buchanan's last town hall drew roughly 2,500 to the Van Wazel in Sarasota. He's held 75 since taking office 10 years ago, but only one since President Donald Trump was elected. Part of his job is to hold town halls, and his, his staff was not elected. He was elected. Diane Perry runs Action Together Sun Coast, the group that's been demanding town halls outside Buchanan's local offices all year. One member of the group met with Tibbetts in Lakewood Ranch on Wednesday, but tells us when she started listing her concerns was told repeatedly that this was not a town hall. Perry says it's frustrating. Do you think he's, he's avoiding his constituents? Yes, I think he is as well as Marco Rubio. Don Anderson Cosgrove voiced his opposition to the Republican health care plan on Thursday and says it went well. Hopefully some of our thoughts will get taken to Buchanan and just to try to make it fair. And if they don't... I got his card, so I'll follow up with him. Congressman Vern Buchanan's staff says there are currently no town halls scheduled for the rest of the year. In the newsroom, Adam Cellini, ABC7, your Suncoast News. And more office appointments are being offered today at the Holmes Beach City Hall and next Wednesday at the Mayaka City Fire Department. The congressman is pleased about a new bill that just passed the House. The bill would invest $130 million to prevent human trafficking and provide assistance to victims. It also extends federal grants that will educate children about avoiding traffickers. The bill would also provide incentives for hotels and airlines to train employees to identify potential trafficking situations. Florida is third in the country in number of reported cases. The proposal now heads to the Senate for a vote. The developer of Lakewood Ranch is offering to sell the premier sports campus to Manatee County, nearly $15 million under the going price. The 127-acre campus is estimated at $20 million, but the developer, Schroeder Manatee, would sell it for just $5.2 million. The offer would also add 36 acres north of the site for future expansion, specifically a public aquatic center. The campus is part of a booming industry called sports performance. Nationally, the Sports Facility Advisory reports youth sports and sports performance have become a $7 billion industry. And in Manatee County, the Bradenton Area Economic Development Council expects to see that industry grow by 14% within the next five years. The sports performance industry is a unique niche um, for the local economy here in the Manatee County region. 
Tourism dollars generate a, a strong economic impact for our local economy, um, and the sports performance industry is a part of those tourism dollars. SMR hopes to see the campus continue as a park and tourism generator for our area. A new Lakewood Ranch business has, has an environmentally friendly approach to getting rid of the trash. <laughs> Respectable wow. receptacle. Says it cleans, sanitizes, and deodorizes trash cans in a way that's good for the environment. The company says it can get rid of bacteria that may pose a health risk. We are increasing the quality of life in our waterways one trash can at a time. Most homeowners don't know it, but it's actually prohibited to clean your own waste can at home and dump it down the storm drain. So we're eliminating that problem. The company is now serving homeowners, but hopes to expand to larger dumpsters at businesses, hospitals, and restaurants in the near future. Well, today is National Summer Learning Day in Sarasota County Libraries, and the Sarasota Police Department is doing their part to get families engaged in reading. The Sarasota Housing Authority held a book giveaway last night for children and their families. The kids also got their pick from an ice cream truck while their parents learned more about library card registration and current summer learning programs. About 66% of low-income families have no children's books in their homes. So we want to end that, turn this into a book from a book desert into a book oasis. It's so important for me to know that my kids will learn to read and they always reading and um, that's how we will learn how to speak English because we speak Spanish too. Well, organizers say the main goal of that event was to get kids excited about reading and teaching families more about library resources. Christmas came early this year for dozens of arts organizations in Sarasota County. Commissioners approved nearly $2 million in grants from the tourist tax. Tourism hit record levels this past year. Grants range from $7,000 for the Sarasota Pops Orchestra to $94,000 for Florida Studio Theater. A half penny from each dollar of the tourist tax revenue is set aside for grants every year. Students at Braden River Elementary School are getting the chance to exercise their minds during creativity camp. The kids take part in all kinds of activities from learning to build their own robots to CSI forensic studies and it looks like singing as well. <laughs> the kids also got to sharpen their storytelling skills with lessons on storyboarding and development. And teachers are emphasizing a more open learning environment while teaching them valuable future career skills. Just good to know these, you know, little things. It just helps you during you know, your lifetime. That's what's going to make kids love science, not studying for an exam. The camp is run by Take Stock and Children of Manatee County. Love to see new, new ways to reach the kids with creativity. I know, That's I do a great too. Idea. Yeah. Teach them what to, how to think as opposed to just what to think. Exactly. exactly. And during the summer months, especially when they have time off, a lot of them are outside doing other activities and they don't really focus on education. Great All to right. get them in those camps that they're able to do so. Yeah, it's a long break during the summer. <laughs> so it's good to keep that going on right straight through the summer. Yeah. A little bit of it anyway. <laughs> We have uh, some pleasant weather this weekend, looks like. We'll talk about that coming up in a few. All right. Still ahead, it's Friday, which means the weekend is just a few hours away. We'll take a look at some of the entertainment options you have on the Sun Coast. And later in the hour, a look at some of the highs and lows of President Trump's visit with his counterpart in France. It's 514, and you are watching Good Morning Sun Coast on ABC7. I took my first handful of pills, and... That's when all my priorities seem to change. He would ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. He just assumed that they would have medication. He'd go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription drugs. I wish I knew really what these prescription pills were. We were so naive about the whole drug thing. These are all synthetic forms of heroin. Keep your medication locked up because you'll never notice that a pill is gone. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Being the caregiver for my husband is truly a blessing, but sometimes it's easy to lose a part of myself. To be my best, for him and for me, it's important to have time to be able to recharge. When I called Tidewell Hospice, they gave me the chance to do just that. They helped me find the time to care for myself, all the while with the peace of mind of knowing my husband is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. So many possibilities worth exploring, Manasota flooring.
Looking for carpet? Look no further. Minnesota Flooring has Smart Strand Carpet as low as $1.79 per square foot. Installed, no add-ons or extras. Unbelievable? Minnesota Flooring can have in-stock carpet installed in your home in 48 hours for as low as $1.99 per square foot. Don't miss these prices. Visit Minnesota Flooring today. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Record-setting hot weather means your AC is working overtime to keep your home cool, which can lead to high bills. That's why we're bringing in the energy experts from Florida Power and Light Company. Watch ABC 7 News from 5 to 6.30 this Tuesday to get your questions answered during the FPL Ask the Energy Expert phone bank. From free online tools to FPL's new mobile app, learn how to save energy and money only on ABC 7. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. So there were a few showers around yesterday. Some of them produced a lot of lightning and some heavy rainfall. This one shot by Matt Smith, our director of mosquito control in Sarasota. And uh, this was from Iaka River State Park, one of the storms that moved through there. Nice, good wide angle shot of a beautiful summertime thunderstorm. Love that stuff. Now, there'll be some thunderstorms around today, but there'll be kind of a few and far between, I think. We have some drier air that's kind of filtered in. And yesterday, during the afternoon, we had some of that drier, warmer air kind of work its way in from the East Coast at about 10, 12,000 feet. And that really kind of hmm, limited the number of storms that we ended up getting. So consequently, our daytime high temperature topped out at around 93 degrees. And I think we'll get similar temperatures again this afternoon. Dew points remain high, though. At 75, despite the fact that we have some drier air moving in aloft, surface air is still pretty thick and uh, humid. 78 degrees our current air temperature, west east wind rather, coming in at about 6. It's fairly uh, breezy wind, I think, again today. 76 degrees in Wachula, Arcadia, 77 in Mayaka Parish, Bradenton, 78 at Lakewood Ranch in Northport, 76 degrees in Punta Gorda, 79 degrees in Inglewood, Venice, and 80 in Longboat Key. There's our trough of low pressure that swung through the state yesterday. It now continues to press out into Gulf waters further and further away from land. And that is allowing high pressure and drier air to build in from the Atlantic coastline. Now, I'm not going to say that there won't be any showers around. There will be. There will be a few showers around today. But there will be less in number than we might normally see on a typical day in midsummer. We're looking at uh, some quiet conditions over on our coast right now, and I think morning commute should be fairly dry as we head into the morning rush. I don't see uh, too much in the way of any kind of weather woes or worries. In fact, we'll have a lot of sunshine out there to start the day. Temperatures warm and somewhat humid, but by afternoon, warmer still coming in in the uh, low 90s, most like. And clouds will start to build as we have this easterly wind again today, kind of strong. The trough departs the region. The high pressure ridge builds in, and we get this easterly wind flow keeping the sea breeze close to the coast. Yes, there will be a few showers around later in the day, and yes, we will see the clouds build in the afternoon. But again, the total amount of rainfall will probably be less than we normally see. Drier air moving in, less rain for probably about three days, and then the moisture will start to return. And we'll have warm daytime high temperatures in the low 90s. So today we get a few showers around and some of them could be uh, pretty good thunderstorms. And those thunderstorms rapidly moving off to the east, so total rainfall amounts probably not all that great. And then tomorrow that drier air really reinforces and I think our rain chances go way down. We'll probably see uh, maybe about a 20 or 30 percent chance of rainfall tomorrow and Sunday as well. 
until those rain chances start to return midweek next week. The best chances of rain with the heaviest rainfall over the next several days will be right along the immediate coast. We're looking at uh, daytime highs that top out in the low 90s. And as I mentioned, Saturday and Sunday, 20 or 30 percent chance of rain. That's about it. Back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, John. Taking a look at traffic on this Friday morning. Looks like Manatee County looking pretty good. A little slow down on 64 as you're uh, heading actually towards the beach. So keep an eye out for that if you usually take that route. I-75 looking good as we head into Sarasota County. Not a whole lot going on. There is a little bit of buildup as you pass by the Stickney Point Bridge and uh, Clark Road heading south. And in Venice, some slowdowns. Looks like around in Business 41 in Venice. Other than that, no accidents on 521 on your Friday morning. And we may be right in the middle of the lazy days of summer. Sounds nice, right? Yeah. But local entertainment is still going strong right here on the Sun Coast. Our Linda Carson has some events you don't want to miss in this weekend's Sun Coast scene. The West Coast Black Theater Summer Camp is dedicated to developing new talent, self-confidence, and love of theater in some of the underserved young people in our community. The camp is called Stage of Discovery. These are some of the actors and singers and dancers from Stage of Discovery. We're all in it together and we are going to be doing Folktale Follies. Folktale Follies tells the tale of three African folk tales through song and dance. This is a very interesting experience. I don't think anyone has ever done these three folk tales, especially our, uh, our dance when it's told through dance. There's a narrator and we're like water and all these different types of elements of the earth. Now, what is this show called? Folktale Follies. Folktale Follies at the West Coast Black Theater Troupe, Sunday, July 16th. What time is that? 3 and 7.30. And the ninth annual Sarasota Improv Festival is in town. Many of the best improv troops in the world are coming to the Florida Studio Theater this weekend for the Sarasota Improv Festival. So if you need a good laugh, this is the place to get it. It's Thursday through Saturday with over 35 performances by 23 troops from all over the world. So many different styles, so many cutting edge performances. For the first time ever, we're going to be doing an all star show. Uh, this is Joe Bill and Friends. Joe Bill is one of the current uh, improv gurus. He's out of Chicago. He's assembled some of the best improvisers uh, at the festival to put on two shows, one on Friday and one on Saturday. And the show, The Marvelous Wonderette is playing off-Broadway right now and also opening at the Player Center this week. Act one takes place in 1958. It's our super senior prom and we were asked last minute to perform as a group. So we rose to the challenge. And then act two is our 10 year high school reunion in 1968. So it's a lot of good music and a lot of fun. The Marvelous Wonderettes at the Player Center July 12th through the 23rd. You'll hear songs like Lollipop, lollipop, oh, lollipop, lollipop, Linda Carson, ABC7, your Sankos News. That one's better than Linda with that one. I can't, I'm crying with laughter right now. That was too hilarious. That was a good one, Linda. You and I are heading in different directions this weekend, right? We are. I'm going to the Sam Hunt concert tonight. That'll be fun. What about you? You're going north. Yes. I'm going to concert south. I'm going to Fort Myers to see Steve Miller and Peter Frampton. Oh, that sounds like a good time as well. So why do we all share this right now? Because if you've got some neat shots this weekend, or if you're doing anything fun, send us pictures of your weekend. We'd love to see more about it. We'll uh, show pictures. Also, we've got some contact information at yeah. ABC7. Yeah, on our Facebook page, just type in Ray Collins, ABC7, Jacqueline Matter, ABC7, and let us know what you guys are doing this weekend. Love to see what you guys are doing out and about throughout our community. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, we'll tell you more about the life of the other guy who helped create one of the world's most iconic companies. And coming up at 5.30, a health scare for President Jimmy Carter after volunteering with Habitat for Humanity. We'll have details on his condition when we come back. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I am creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah, yeah. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. 
My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. From meeting curious lemurs to feeding big cats and hosing down rhinos, there's never a dull moment. And sometimes these amazing animals chime in. Watch Animal Outtakes every week on ABC7. Shortly after noon in France, it's Bast Bastille Day mm, yes. in France. And here is a parade going down uh, one of the uh, perhaps Champs d'Elysees in Paris. President Trump is on hand with his uh, French counterpart. Yeah, still on my to-do list, visit France. Oh, I've been there once, beautiful city. Oh, I can imagine, pictures, I feel like don't even do it justice. It's a, it's a there they are, the first couple right there. It's a, it's a photo op at every turn. And there's the Champs-Élysées in the background, so that's the Arc de Triomphe, rather. Right. That's indeed where they are. Lots going on there today. Yes, it is. An eventful uh, couple of days, and we'll have more in our lead story next half hour about the president's visit to Paris. 527 this morning. Welcome back. And the merger of the two biggest companies in the daily fantasy sports game is now a no-go. And Google Play has announced what it's calling a new release radio. ABC's Candace Gibson and Linda Lopez have details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, no merger for the top online fantasy sports operations. DraftKings and FanDuel have thrown in the towel on their merger after fierce opposition by federal regulators. It's believed the two companies together have more than 90% of the daily fantasy market. Google Play Music isn't just for Samsung users anymore. The company's new release radio is now available to everyone. Google says it limited the rollout to Samsung customers so it could get feedback. And a little-known co-founder of Apple is telling his story Ronald Wayne helped Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak start the tech giant. And in a recent interview, Wayne said that he sold his stake in the company in 1976 for $800. Today, those shares would be worth $67 billion. He says he has no regrets, though, and has never owned an Apple product. I wonder how much he cries. <laughs> those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites. Brought to you by Walgreens. Summer took a hit this morning when Frankie popped the alligator floaty. Plus, snacks and drinks are gone, people. And one of us used up all the sunscreen. I wonder who? We're gonna need some reinforcements. Quick. Copy that. Walgreens makes it easy when summer needs a little help. Your summer base camp is just around the corner, so you can get in, out, and back to those summer shenanigans. Walgreens, at the corner of happy and healthy. Now with card, one liter smart water is two for four dollars or two thirty-nine each. Do you really use head and shoulders? No, not really. I knew that. Not the one you think you know. The Tri-Action Formula cleans, removing up to 100% of flakes, protects, and even moisturizes for Sofia Vergara hair. Tyler loves chicken. Turns out his old dog food had chicken byproduct meal, not chicken. So I switched to Blue Buffalo. Blue is made with the finest natural ingredients and no chicken byproduct meal. We love him like family, so we feed him like family with Blue. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. <laughs> Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud too. Going on now, for every two windows you buy, get one more free. Call today. My name is Haley. I have fragile X syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being upfront and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is 
a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.employflorida.com. I am powerful beyond my wildest imagination. I will define my future. I will keep challenging myself to improve. Because I am a future leader of this great nation. I will make a difference in my community. I will not settle for simply chasing my dreams. I will achieve them. Because I was given a chance. An opportunity. At Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. The ultimate leadership experience. Join us. We'll build a new future together. It's summer on the Sun Coast, and you know what that means. It's Friday Fest season, and you're invited. Hi, I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. Join ABC7 at the Van Wazel on July 21st when Kettle of Fish takes the stage to perform their high-energy mix of blues, soul, and funk. We'll be there. Join us for great food, friends, and fun. For more information, call this number. Or go to mysuncoast.com slash FridayFest. Presented by Kettle Automotive and Cool Today. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Hurricane season is here, and so is the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Suncoast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with pets, and important phone numbers. Visit mysuncoast.com and download the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. Brought to you by Batteries Plus, the Florida Lottery, and Sarasota Glass and Mirror. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, restaurant guide, and more. Go to MySuncoast.com slash dining. This half hour on Good Morning Suncoast, it's Bastille Day in France as President Trump visits with his French counterpart in Paris. We'll have the latest. Plus, it's being called the largest health care fraud enforcement action in Justice Department history. We'll tell you about the billion dollar schemes now being stopped. And harsh words for the governor from the state Supreme Court. Yeah, we'll explain those stories more next on Good Morning Suncoast. Live from the ABC 7 studios, this is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good morning. We've shifted from uh, Paris to Lemon in the Rosemary <laughs> District. Stark difference there. A little difference there. A little tower camera shot as you wake up at 5.33 on this 14th of July. It's actually Bastille Day, and if we're lucky, we'll get John Scalzi to sing some selections from Les Mis today. Oh, there we go. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> That's right. Good morning, John. It's going to take more than luck. <laughs> Is that a song from Les Mis? No, no, it's not going to happen. Nope, 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 oh, nope, okay. nope, no way, no chance, no how, no way. Uh, uh, oh, come on, you can sing. It will be about as scarce as the rainfall. Oh, the nice segue. Nice one. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. We have uh, some dry air moving in from the west, and that's going to bring us some uh, some very, pr uh, from the east rather, and that's going to bring us some very pretty, um, pretty conditions, I think, over the weekend. Now, today we still have a chance of seeing a few scattered showers around. Moisture is still thick in the lower part of the atmosphere, and the day starts off kind of humid with a fair amount of sunshine, but then building clouds later in the day will cause a few scattered showers around, maybe a thunderstorm or two, probably around 3 to, oh, 5 o'clock or so. Rain chance at about 40%, less than an average summer day. And daytime highs topping out warmer than average, coming in in the low 90s. Over the weekend, some really pleasant weather. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few. All right, thank you, John. 301 southbound as you head towards State Road 70. Looking a little congested right now for no apparent reason at 5.30 in the morning. Sarasota County looking mostly clear. Maybe a little slowdown at B Ridge as you head south toward Clark. And speaking of heading south, our final map in South County shows us nothing much to speak of at 5.34 on your Friday morning. Topping our news this half hour, President Trump wraps up a quick trip to Paris today at the invitation of France's new president, Emmanuel Macron. The two leaders have set aside their differences and focused on shared priorities like Syria, terrorism, and fair trade. ABC's Janae Norman has this recap. 
President Donald Trump making friends in France, invited to celebrate Bastille Day by French President Emmanuel Macron, but controversy following close by. Trump unable to shake the meeting between his inner circle and a woman his son was told was a Russian government lawyer. My son is a wonderful young man. He took a meeting with a Russian lawyer, not a government lawyer, but a Russian lawyer. Uh, it was a short meeting. I think from a practical standpoint, uh, most people would have taken that meeting. But those emails released by Don Jr. were clear. He agreed to meet with a Russian government attorney who he was told had incriminating information on Hillary Clinton, and it was all part of Russia and its government support for Mr. Trump. Nothing came of the meeting, and I think it's a meeting that most people in politics probably would have taken. And Trump backtracking after repeatedly bashing Paris when pressed by the French press. You were implying at the time that Paris was not safe anymore. Uh, those are very strong words. Uh, would you repeat them today? You better let me answer that one first. That's a beauty. It's going to be just fine because you have a great president. You have somebody that's going to run this country right. And a moment sticking out for many. President Trump's comment about the French first lady's figure. <laughs> During a joint news conference, President Trump said he's open to a reversal of his decision to pull the U.S. out of the Paris Accord, but he didn't reveal what he'd need in return to do so. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. Well, it's health care take two as Senate Republicans have unveiled their second try at repealing and replacing Obamacare. To gain votes, the new version keeps two Obamacare taxes on the wealthy, including $70 billion that could be used to help reduce premiums and add $45 billion to help fight the opioid epidemic. But critics worry Americans who need the most care, including people with pre-existing conditions and seniors, could end up paying a lot more. But the same question remains, will it get enough votes to pass? Right now, the two Republicans say they are voting no, and with just one more no vote, the bill would sink. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has announced what officials are calling the largest health care fraud enforcement action in Justice Department history. Sessions says upwards of 400 people nationwide stand charged in health care fraud schemes, resulting in $1.3 billion in false billings. The opioid epidemic was a major focus of the arrests and charges. Many defendants were charged in connection with prescribing and distributing dangerous narcotics. Those charged include 115 doctors and other health care providers, including a Del Rey Beach facility that allegedly recruited addicts with gift cards and visits to strip clubs, leading to $58 million in false treatments and tests. And here on the Sun Coast, the CEO of Planned Parenthood of Southwest and Central Florida is retiring after 24 years. During her tenure, Barbara Jervecki built the Sarasota-based organization into a large regional health care provider with 11 health care clinics in 22 counties across the state. The organization's board has begun the search for a new CEO, but Jervecki has agreed to remain in her role through January of 2018. A health scare for former President Jimmy Carter. The CEO of Habitat for Humanity says the former president got dehydrated and was taken to the hospital for observation yesterday. He became ill after working in the hot sun in Winnipeg, Canada. He is said to be okay this morning. The 92-year-old Nobel Peace Prize winner was our 39th president. For more than 30 years, the Jimmy and Rosalind Carter Work Project has helped build more than 4,000 homes. An update now on Congressman Steve Scalise as he recovers from a gunshot wound. Hospital officials say Scalise is now in fair condition after undergoing another operation yesterday. Scalise was shot in the hip last month when a gunman opened fire on a Republican congressional baseball practice in Northern Virginia. He was first released from intensive care on June 22nd after surgeries but was readmitted last week due to an infection. Congress looking to crack down on hazing on college campuses. Lawmakers unveiled the Report and Educate About Campus Hazing, or REACH Act, on Capitol Hill. Supporters say the measure, if passed, will require colleges to report hazing incidents as part of their annual crime reports. It is my hope that the REACH Act will help prevent more families from losing loved ones that we will curtail hazing on campuses and protect America's students. The measure comes as the preliminary hearings begin this week for more than a dozen Penn State University students into the death of a pledge. 
18 members of a fraternity face charges in the death of 19-year-old Timothy Piazza, who was fatally injured during an, a hazing ritual. And here in Florida, new developments in the case of two Florida teens who went lost at sea nearly two years ago. Perry Cohen's family has announced plans to pursue a wrongful death suit. Meanwhile, Austin Stefano's mom is trying to use an old maritime law to protect her from being sued by the Cohens for more than the value of the boy's recovered boat, which is about $500. A federal judge put that case on hold this week, but he is allowing the Cohens to move forward with their lawsuit in state court, but only on one condition. That they would uh, not pursue collecting on that judgment until the limitation action has been decided in the federal court. If the Cohens win in state court, the only way they would collect anything more than $500 is to go back to federal court. Some Florida Supreme Court justices are criticizing Governor Scott's recent decision to veto money for citrus canker. One judge reportedly wrote in his opinion that Scott's title is governor, not king. But the court declined to review the governor's veto of $37 million to homeowners who lost trees due to the state's attempt to eradicate citrus canker. Scott has the legal authority to veto the money to pay residents whose healthy citrus trees were cut down by the state in an effort to eradicate the disease. The state Supreme Court threw out a petition filed by residents in Broward and Lee County attempting to overturn Scott's veto. And on a lighter note, fans of the Manatee County-based drama series Claws can rejoice this morning. TNT announced that it has renewed the series for another season. Claws follows the rise of five manicurists working at the fictional nail artisans of Manatee County. While the show is set in Palmetto, it is mostly filmed in New Orleans. The series has resonated with critics and viewers, ranking as Cable's number four new drama with adults 18 to 49. You ever seen it? Uh, I've seen an episode of it. I'm sure you guys have your DVR set for it. Oh, right? yeah. No. <laughs> I've never seen it. I would like to, though. Yeah. I don't understand why it's being shot in New Orleans if it's set in Manatee County. I know that they do have a few scenes here and there that have been shot here. I know uh, one of them specifically in St. Armand Circle. So mm -hmm. Because I've... Florida changed the film incentives and there's less shooting going on here. That could be. A lot of people would yeah. agree with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's <laughs> a fact. Uh, we have some uh, pleasant weather this weekend, I think. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few. All right. Still ahead, new research says there may be a way to lower your blood sugar without any medication. We'll tell you how mindfulness exercises can help up next in Health Smart. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free. Services.com. Services.com. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Rose takes her volunteering for Tidewell Hospice very seriously. But she knows how to have fun, too. And that's what she brings when we're invited to visit patients as part of Tidewell's pet therapy program. People love to see her. She really brightens their day. She makes people smile. And in end-of-life care, a smile can be a wonderful gift. Tidewell Hospice. It's more than you think. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812.
Thank you. You got a key? Go fish! In your face! In your face! It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. A decade of war has taken an unprecedented toll on our men and women in uniform. Hundreds of thousands of our veterans are suffering from the trauma of war. At Justice for Vets, we believe that every veteran should have the opportunity for treatment and restoration. Get involved and go to justiceforvets.org. Help put treatment within reach of veterans in crisis. Veterans fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for theirs. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. 78 degrees of current air temperature, dew point coming in at 75. It's kind of a muggy start to the day, but we have some clear skies out there. There'll be plenty of sunshine around to kick off the morning rush, and I don't see much in the way of a rainfall chance to start off the day either. Temperatures are mild everywhere you look, with 77 in Wachula, Arcadia, Mayaka, 78 in Parrish, Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch, Northport. 76 degrees, a little bit cooler around Punta Gorda, but Inglewood comes in at 80 already, 80 degrees already, 79 degrees in Venice, and 81 out at Longbow Key. The trough of low pressure, which brought us a few scattered showers around yesterday, has now moved out into Gulf waters, where the number of showers has increased. It continues to press away from us, leaving us with some drier air beginning to filter in. Didn't get a lot of rainfall around yesterday, but we got a few showers, and a couple of them were pretty heavy. Those showers um, will probably be kind of the same kind of coverage this afternoon that we saw yesterday, I think. And the timing will be similar as well. Coming in a little bit earlier in the mid-afternoon and then lingering into the early evening hours and completely dissipating for the evening. Uh, looking at the trough of low pressure, continuing to press away, a trough to the north of us and high pressure building in from the east. Now, the winds will be consistently out of the east as well, and of course, we still have that good low-level fetch of moisture bringing us some high humidity days through the weekend. But with the high building in, I think the number of showers that we see over the weekend will be less. Now, most of them will be right along the coastline as those winds will tend to push our sea breeze pretty close to the coast. And so that line where the winds meet and converge and create the uh, the kicker for the showers and thunderstorms to start will be located on our coast, not the other. Some drier air moves in. We have less rain chance for probably about three days. And we have warm daytime high temperatures coming in in the low 90s yesterday, 93, probably similar to that again today. Those are the weather highlights. Carry you right straight through the weekend. There's our dry air indicated by the tan colorizations on our water vapor imagery, which shows you the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere and what the uh, weather is like. Some of that drier air actually filtered in yesterday, warmer, drier air. About 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon came our way, and uh, it, uh, it really at about 10, 12,000 feet really cut off the heads of some of the thunderstorms that built, so we didn't get a lot of coverage. That will be in full force over the weekend and really reduce rain chances. Watch the RPM computer model today. Yeah, there'll be some rain showers around today. Fewer in number probably than we normally might see, but there'll be a thunderstorm or two around. Tomorrow, rain chances go way down, and at the same time, our RPM computer model at 5 p.m. tomorrow shows hardly a rain shower to be seen. I think we'll be able to drop our rain shower chances to maybe 20% at times over the weekend, which is pretty low, actually. And then we'll start to work it back up as we head into next work week. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, John. Taking a look at traffic, some big slowdowns on 301 heading northbound. Also, State Road 70 as you head towards 301. Other than that, I-75 and 41 looking good as we head into Sarasota. Looks like there are some slowdowns on Fruitville heading towards 41 and Bee Ridge heading towards the interstate. A little slowdown on 41 as you pass by uh, Sticking Point Bridge. And as we head into South County, looks like Business 41 seeing a few slowdowns, but no accidents at 550 on your Friday morning. 
In this hour's Health Smart, when women are considering having a baby, an important idea to keep in mind is how your overall health during pregnancy may have implications on your child's behavior. A new report suggests a key consideration you should add to your pre-pregnancy checklist, getting to a healthy weight first. The study says mothers who are overweight during their pregnancy ensured their kids were at higher risk for external behavioral problems like ADHD. Oddly enough, this phenomenon seems to be exclusive to boys born from obese mothers. Reasons for this are still unclear. And here's a way to lower your blood sugar without medication. A new study published in the journal Obesity shows mindfulness training, reduced stress, and fasting blood sugar levels in overweight women better than health education classes. One group went through mindfulness-based stress reduction classes, including meditation and breath awareness. Meanwhile, the other group learned about diet, exercise, and stress management. The mindfulness group rated their stress scores as more than two points lower on a 10-point scale. And there was a decrease in their fasting blood sugars, which did not happen with the other group. Good idea for all of us every day. Yes. You know, still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, the Natural History Museum in London unveiling a huge addition. <laughs> we'll tell you how big this animal is and where you can, when you can see it in person after this. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or heaven forbid replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Record-setting hot weather means your AC is working overtime to keep your home cool, which can lead to high bills. That's why we're bringing in the energy experts from Florida Power & Light Company. Watch ABC7 News from 5 to 6.30 this Tuesday to get your questions answered during the FPL Ask the Energy Expert phone bank. From free online tools to FPL's new mobile app, learn how to save energy and money only on ABC7. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why is, is heroin, heroin so bad? addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. When my youngest, Addie, was two and a half, she was diagnosed with leukemia. When we first heard that diagnosis, you feel extremely alone. Walking in that light, the night light, with 6,000 people carrying lights, white for survivors, red for supporters, gold in memory of those who have passed. It's the Leukemia Lymphoma Society's hope that every year there are fewer gold lanterns. Your lantern will make a difference. Start a team, join a team. Help us light the night. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A contract that weathered Tet. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. A live shot early afternoon. 
from the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Yes, it is day two of President Trump's visit with uh, the French president there, Emmanuel Macron, but it is also Bastille Day. That's right. July 14th is Bastille Day. Welcome back. 5.55 on your Friday morning. All right. Let's take a look at some of the top stores here on the Sun Coast today. One of Sarasota's busiest roads will reopen to traffic later on this afternoon. The city shut down Osprey last year to start building a new sewage plant. Osprey was shut down from 41 to Bay of Vista. It'll reopen at 4 o'clock this afternoon, finally. Plus, the search continues for the suspects involved in a home invasion that led to the death of a man in Bradenton last weekend. Investigators are trying to figure out who killed 54-year-old Dwayne Hutchinson. Reward has been increased to $8,000 to find out who did it. And the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office inching closer to moving headquarters out to Cattleman Road near Bee Ridge. The move would cost taxpayers about $16 million. Finally this hour, the Natural History Museum in London is unveiling an 82-foot-long skeleton of a blue whale. A whale is suspended from the ceiling of its main atrium, and they've named the female blue whale Hope as a symbol of humanity's power to shape a sustainable future. The installation is all part of a big transformation throughout the museum for its 136-year history. It's open to the public starting today. So if you're heading to London, there you uh, go. That's <laughs> what a blue whale would look like. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a dinosaur. Biggest animal ever lived. There you wow. go. Good trivia there. More news and John's forecast after this.